What really happened to Ann Baxter? Ann Baxter was born May 7, 1923, in Michigan City, Indiana, to Catherine Dorothy, whose father was the architect Frank Lloyd Wright and Kenneth Stewart Baxter, an executive with the Seagram Company. When Baxter was five, she appeared in a school play, and as her family had moved to New York when she was six years old, Baxter continued to She was raised in Westchester County, New York and attended Burley. At age 10, Baxter attended a Broadway play starring Helen Hayes, and she was so impressed that she declared to her family that she wanted to become an actress. By the age of 13, she had appeared on Broadway in Seen but Not Heard. During this period, Baxter learned her acting craft as a student of actress and teacher Maria Ospenskaya. In 1939, she was cast as Catherine Hepburn's little sister in the play The Philadelphia Story, but Hepburn did not like Baxter's acting style, and she was replaced during the show's pre-Broadway run. Rather than giving up, she turned to Hollywood. At 16, Baxter's screen tested for the role of Mrs. Dewinter in Rebecca. Director Alfred Hitchcock deemed Baxter too young for the role, but she soon secured a seven-year contract with 20th Century Fox. In 1940, she was loaned to MGM for her first film 20 Mule Team, in which she was billed fourth after Wallace Beery, Leo Carrillo, and Marjorie Rum. She worked with John Barrymore in her next film The Great Profile, 1940, and appeared as the Ing New in the Jack Benny vehicle Charlie's Aunt, 1941. She received star billing in Swamp Water, 1941, and The Pied Piper, 1942, which was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Picture. Baxter was loaned to RKO to appear in director Orson Welles' The Magnificent Ambersons, 1942. She was Tyrone Powers' leading lady in Crash Dive, 1943, her first Technicolor film. She became a popular star in World War II dramas and received top billing in The North Star, 1943, The Sullivans, 1944, and Sunday Dinner for a Soldier, 1944, co-starring her future husband. She was loaned to United Artists for the leading role in the film Noir Guest in the House, 1944, and appeared in A Royal Scandal, 1945. Baxter co-starred with Tyrone Power and Jean Tierney in 1946's The Razor's Edge, for which she won both the Academy Award and the Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actress. She was loaned to Paramount for a top-billed role opposite William Holden in Blaze of Noon, 1947, and to MGM for a supporting role as Clark Gable's wife in Homecoming, 1948. Back at 20th Century Fox, she played a wide variety of roles. A Lawyer in Love with Cornell Wilde in The Walls of Jericho, 1948, with Dan Daly, and Another Tomboy in A Ticket to Tomahawk, 1950, again with Dan. In 1950, Baxter was chosen to co-star in All About Eve largely because of a resemblance to Claudette Colbert, who originally was cast but dropped out and was replaced by Betty Davis. The original idea was to have Baxter's character gradually come to mirror Colbert's over the course of the film. Baxter received an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress for the title role of Eve Harrington. Her next Fox film Follow the Sunday, 1951, co-starred Glenn Ford as champion golfer Ben Hogan. Baxter played Hogan's wife Valerie. She was top billed in the Western The Outcasts of Poker Flat, 1950 with Dale Robertson, and was part of an ensemble cast in O. Henry's Full House, 1952, her last project for Fox. Baxter then left 20th Century Fox in 1953. In 1953, Baxter contracted a two-picture deal for Warner Brothers. Her first was opposite Montgomery Clift in Alfred Hitchcock's I Confess. The second was the Fritz Lang who done it the Blue Gardenia. In June 1954, Baxter won the part of the Egyptian princess and Queen Nefertari in Cecil B. DeMille's award winning the Ten Commandments. Her scenes were shot on Paramount sound stages in 1955, and she attended the film's New York and Los Angeles premieres in November 1956. Despite criticisms of her interpretation of Nefertari, DeMille and The Hollywood Reporter both thought her performance was very Baxter worked regularly in television in the 1960s.
She appeared as one of the mystery guests on What's My Line. She also starred as guest villain Zelda the Great in episodes 9 and 10 of the Batman series. She also played an old flame of Raymond Burr on his crime series Ironside, as well as in an episode of the Alfred Hitchcock. Baxter made a guest appearance on My Three Sons season 8 episode 10 aired on November 4, 1967 called Designing Woman portraying a glamorous female engineer that wanted Steve Douglas Fred McMurray as a love interest and possible future husband. In the 1970s, Baxter was a frequent guest and guest host on The Mike Douglas Show. In 1971, she had a role in Fool's Parade as an aging prostitute who helps characters played by Jimmy Stewart, Strother Martin, and Kurt Russell escape from the villain, played by George Kennedy before an act of betrayal seals her fate. In 1983, Baxter starred in the television series Hotel, replacing Betty Davis after Davis became Baxter married actor John Hodiak on July 7, 1946, at her parents' home in Burlingame, California. The couple had one daughter, Katrina, born in 1951. They divorced in 1950 in the mid-1950s. Baxter began a relationship with her publicist Russell Birdwell, who took control of her career and directed her in The Come On, 1956. The couple formed Baxter Birdwell Productions to make films on a 10-year plan. Baxter would star in the films and Birdwell would work behind the ca- In 1960, Baxter married her second husband Randolph Galt, an American owner of a neighboring cattle station near Sydney, Australia where she was filming Summer of the Seventeenth Doll. After the birth of their second daughter, Maginelle, back in California. Baxter and Galt were divorced in 1969. By 1977, Baxter married David Clay, a stockbroker. It was a brief marriage. Clay died unexpectedly. Sadly, Baxter suffered a stroke on December 4, 1985, while hailing a taxi on Madison Avenue in New York City. Baxter remained on life support for eight days in New York's Lenox Hill Hospital, until family members agreed that brain function had ceased. She died on December 12, aged 62. Baxter is buried on the estate of Frank Lloyd Wright at Lloyd-Jones Cemetery in Spring Green, Wisconsin. Goodbye and back.